Dear friends in Christ, praise be to the Lord Jesus Christ, but now and forevermore. Amen. Today is the fifth Sunday of Lent. Ye be in the spirit of this season. I heartily welcome you to this liturgical and solemn platform. We are gradually drawing closer to the most important moments in our journey this season. The tune is gradually changing. The time for the ultimate price to be paid is gradually setting in, and the message has become more intense. And I tell you, do not give up at this critical time, for Christ is ready and ever willing to offer everything for our salvation because he loves and he values us. The message of this Sunday is reflected in all the readings, and the theme of our reflection is sacrifice and glory. Christianity is not a religion of convenience. Christianity is not necessarily a religion of science and wonders. It is not a religion of comfort and pleasure. Christianity is founded and built on love. And this love presupposes self-emptying, self-sacrifice, self-giving, for the good and the betterment of the other person. Christianity is a religion on an extra mile. Religion on an extra mile entails our readiness, our ability to forgive those who, ordinarily speaking, do not deserve our forgiveness, to love those who hate us, and to give out to those who may not give us in return. This fact is reflected in the readings of this Sunday. The first reading from the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 33, from verse 31 to 34. And the second reading from the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 5, verses 7 to 9. Remind us that through obedience, suffering, Jesus established a new covenant in his blood. From an old covenant of judgment to a new covenant of love, forgiveness and reconciliation. We are thus assured of God's faithfulness and support, even in times of difficulty and uncertainty. In the Gospel, taken from the Gospel according to John chapter 12, from verse 20 to 23, the Greeks who came up to Philip were most likely Greek-speaking Jews from the Diaspora, who began following Jesus after he had raised Lazarus from the dead. The visit of the Greeks is important as it signals the coming of the hour of Jesus. And there are three earlier references in the gospel to the hour of Jesus. John chapter 2 verse 4, John chapter 7 verse 30, and John chapter 8 verse 20. In each of these cases, Jesus says that his hour has not yet come. Now, finally, Jesus announces that his hour has come. Jesus' reply to Philip and Andrew is a discourse on the meaning of his death. He uses two analogies. Analogy of grain of wheat falling to the ground and dying to bear much fruit, and the analogy of the ground of those who love their life will lose it, but those who hate their life will keep it. Through these analogies, Christ teaches us that new life and eternal life are possible only by death of the self through suffering and service. The gospel challenges us to embrace the cross in our lives, to die to our selfish desires and ambitions and to follow Christ. As we reflect in these readings, let us ask ourselves, are we willing to offer everything to offer ourselves as living sacrifice, trusting in God's plan for our lives? How does Jesus' willingness to lay down his life for others inspire you to serve and to love those around you? It may sound absurd and unimaginable to some each time God reminds us of losing our lives if we love it. But this is the absolute truth about Christian life and calling. This is what defines the Christian life and experience without which the Christian life is vague and empty. If there is anything that distinguishes a worldly person and a Christian, it is the ability to offer oneself, taking the risk to save others. 
to deny and deprive oneself of one's comfort and pleasure to make the life of others better. Here comes the question. Do we still have leaders who are willing to risk and deny themselves comfort to build the nation, to build the community, to build the church? We are lies, our heroic sacrifice. We need to rediscover who we are. Christ's death for us on the cross will be meaningless if we cannot accept the slightest inconvenience of the world to accommodate others. If we cannot make a simple or heroic sacrifice to make the other person better, we need to step out of our comfort zones to discover thousands whose lives we can change by our sacrifice. When we suffer in pursuit of worthy course of action, we come at better persons, we touch lives, we transform the world. As we enter into the final days of Lent, may God help us to discover that what it takes to be his children. May he increase his grace in us to ensure bitterness and selfish desires. May he grant us the grace to exercise the pride in us in order to embrace humility and selflessness. Peace be with you and may God bless us through Christ our Lord. Amen.